This is the Odner Lucid. It is a pinwheel machine that has been especially adapted for British currency. British currency uses pounds sterling, which are subdivided into shillings and pence. And the abbreviations or the symbols for those different coins are L, S and D. Usually the L is uh, cursive. And that's where the name comes from, Lucid, L, S and D. The input register is entirely normal, it's a normal decimal uh, number. But the counter and the output register, those have adaptations so that they can hold uh, a value in pounds. It can be used just in a decimal mode, but uh, it's not perfect for that because there are a lot of compromises that have to be made to, so that it can uh, work with British currency. Let's take a look at the output register and the adaptations it has for the British currency. We need to use a, a fixed decimal point so I'm going to use the triangle mark up here and enter a 1 just to the left of it. So that's one pound. And over on the counter, I'll shift the carriage so that these triangle marker arrows point to the last yellow digit and the first red digit. I'll get back to this counter later. If I turn the handle now, it'll add one pound at this position. So you can see we have three uh, digits after the decimal point. And this is uh, in decimal fractions of a pound. So if I shift the carriage to the left and turn the crank again, I now add one tenth of a pound, which is two shillings. And if I shift again, I'm now adding one hundredth of a pound which is about 2.4 pence and shifting it again and turn the crank I add one thousandth of a pound which is 0.24 pence, about a quarter pence, a farthing. Of course nobody really uses these uh, decimals so instead uh, this uh, register ha has these windows and if you move this slider over, you get here on this side uh, yeah, the representation in yeah, shillings and pence. So the three decimal digits are covered up and the shillings and pence is revealed instead. So at the moment it's on zero, zero and if I add this one thousandth of a pound it'll add one quarter here, because that's the nearest representation, it's rounded to a quarter. And as I keep adding, it keeps incrementing this by one quarter pence. And if I add a tenth of a pound, it just increments uh, or turns this digit which only has the even numbers, so it adds two shillings. And as you go further, it, it goes over 10 to 12, and eventually to 18, and then it carries, of course, to a whole pound over here. The interesting bit is what happens when you add a tenth of a pound and that uh, changes these windows. It shifts a window over to this side so that you now have a different digit here which is uh, two and a half pence more than uh, the other value. Or just about. Of course it's rounded again. If I do it one more time, 
then uh, it'll also change the shillings. It'll move this window over as well to show an odd number of shillings. And one more time, and then it carries and changes this to uh, yeah, two shillings. At any moment, you can just switch between the decimal representation and the uh, yeah, sterling currency representation. Uh, now, just another interesting thing is that uh, there's this blank space in between here. And in fact, there are extra uh, digits here that you don't see. In, in fact, it's not just three digits after the decimal point, but six digits. Uh, so if I shift it to here, now it adds one to this first hidden digit. Two, three, four, Five. You can see it carries on five. So what you see in the visible uh, windows, the visible number, is the rounded value of the full uh, value in the register. So this carries on five so that uh, it's the rounded value is shown in the window. Uh, let me... Uh, if I do 499, so there's 499 in, these, uh, in this hidden part of the register, just adding one more will make it carry over to 0 0.5, which is then rounded to 1 in the, in the visible window, 1,000th of a pound still. Note that this does mean that uh, the actual value shown here, even though what, what's shown here is the rounded uh, value of what's shown here, so, so that rounding might actually be slightly in the wrong direction given the hidden digits behind, behind here. But as long as you don't clear the register and just keep on calculating with these hidden digits so that uh, you don't lose that uh, extra information then uh, there shouldn't be a problem. Now let's take a look at this counter. It has a switch above it. This switch can only move when the carriage is shifted all the way to the right, like this. It's now in single mode, which means that the turn of a crank will always increment whichever number is being pointed at with the large arrow here. Assuming we're using the triangular dot as our uh, fixed decimal point, that's the uh, digit that will be increased. And as you move the carriage, you have these uh, red wheels here, red digits, and those will be incremented in this single mode as well, just by one digit. It should be noted, however, that uh, the third red digit, actually, it counts all the way up to 11. because that digit is actually used for British currency, for counting the pence. But if you're using it in the single mode, in the decimal mode, yeah, that shouldn't really be used, of course. You shouldn't turn it that far. And uh, another thing is that there is no uh, carry from the uh, leftmost uh, red digit to the first uh, white digit after that. Um, yeah, those are compromises for being able to use this with British currency. And yeah, if you switch this to British currency, then the counter is will behave in a different way. Because yeah, 
turning, turning the crank once in this position of course increments the number of pounds but if you now shift left you're essentially adding uh, incrementing the tenth of a pound and it's now going to try and write this in uh, British currency so a tenth of a pound is two shillings these two red digits together uh, are the number of shillings so as you add a tenth of pounds you add uh, two to the, those two uh, digits. If I shift one further I will now be adding uh, hundredths of a pound, so 2.4 pence and in indeed you can see it adds two there and four there. And this ha also happens with uh, a thousandth of a pound it'll add 0.24 pence let's do a small example suppose I have 123 items which each cost uh, one pound three shillings and a sixpence here is the number of items I want this to show the price of one pound three shillings and sixpence so I have this in uh, currency mode and if I turn the crank I've added one pound now I want to add three shillings unfortunately it goes up in even numbers so if I add another one that's too much and I can then shift again and it'll add uh, smaller amounts 2.4 pence but if I add enough of them I can make up the three shillings there we go so now I still want to add uh, six pence one, two if I add more that's too much so I now add smaller amounts until I get to six pence. There we go. So the result is 144 pounds and 0.525, which in shillings and pence is 144 pounds, 10 shillings and six pence. It should be noted that it's not always possible to get this price exactly here. This time it was exactly representable, but that's not always possible because yeah, some numbers just are not representable uh, exactly in decimal digits. So, for example, if I had exactly half a pence, then you couldn't do that. But you can get close, of course, because this is almost a quarter pence but not quite. You can just uh, keep going and then try to get as close as possible. As you can see the price here doesn't change anymore as you go further. Nevertheless, these uh, these extra digits after the decimal point, these uh, yeah, ten thousandths and smaller, those will still change. But yeah, as it shows here, the rounded amount, just up to uh, yeah, three digits essentially. Yeah, you, this won't change. But if you have a lot of items and many of them have uh, yeah, those prices, it. Yeah, it helps to have these hidden extra digits to make the uh, calculation more accurate and to avoid rounding errors.
That was the Odinor Lucid. Thank you for watching.